Hello, my fellow scientists. Here's the science that I was most excited about in 2023. It's still January. I get to do this. So I did a survey of the top 10 lists from Science Magazine and Nature and The Guardian, as well as my own notes over the year. And I've got links for all the sources, lists, and the original articles in the doohickey below. Energy. First of all, on my own uh, front, the iron battery it has been passed on to my foreign rare student, the soon-to-be Dr. Koarala. Took over the project in 2020. I am hopeful that we'll be submitting the paper soon, and I will update here as soon as that's accepted. He has significantly improved the power of the cell more than 10 times of the power compared to my previous best. So I look forward to telling you all about it, but I have to wait until it gets published. Battery research in general got a huge boost in 2023, Joe Biden's Department of Energy is putting $3.5 billion into battery research. That is a lot of funding. I'm used to seeing $100 million as a very big program, and it's appropriate. If the United States wants to stay ahead of the curve, we need this. Good job to the Biden administration. This is a big investment in a critical area to American prosperity. American science is definitely better off under Grandpa Joe. This arrives on the heels of announcements of new solid state battery progress out of the University of Maryland. Solid state batteries are a potentially big deal for battery capacity and safety. New battery technology takes a frustratingly long time to commercialize, but it has to start somewhere. I also learned about something new about hydrogen in 2023. Apparently, sometimes boreholes for natural gas hit deposits of pure hydrogen instead of methane. Now, I was under the impression that hydrogen escapes confinement too easily for that to really ever happen, but apparently there are deposits of 98% pure hydrogen under the ground for the drilling. Unlike natural gas, neither hydrogen gas leaks nor hydrogen combustion products will cause climate change. Now, I've been very skeptical about hydrogen as a fuel. Hydrogen usually needs to be made from something else. It's like energy storage rather than an energy source. You can make it from electricity and water, or you can make it from natural gas, which defeats the purpose. Basically, it's a volatile and difficult way to store energy, and it makes metals brittle when they come into contact with it. But finding vast deposits of hydrogen ready to use might, might change the calculation a bit. I'm happy to be wrong. Nuclear fusion made progress too. 2022 was the first year of ignition, first break-even fusion pulse at Lawrence Livermore National Labs, but 2023 marked further progress. They achieved ignition three more times and set new energy records. I was also excited about power plant progress at Helion and Tri-Alpha. These are smaller private fusion enterprises. Helion announced a power purchase agreement with Microsoft. The software giant agreed to buy energy from Helion's first fusion power plant in 2028. That seems ambitious, maybe even delusional from here, but who knows? I would love to be wrong. I'd love to nerd out and explain the fuel cycle. It gets very exciting, so leave me a comment if you want to go over the deuterium helium-3 fuel cycle that they think they can use for power in the very near term. Tri-Alpha measured the first proton-boron plasma fusion products. So this flew under my radar until very recently. Uh, the fusion project hopes to do a neutronic fusion. That means they don't produce neutrons. This has two advantages. It doesn't make weird radioactive isotopes in the reactor walls, which is nice. But secondly, and maybe more importantly, it doesn't need a steam turbine. It captures the energy like a reverse particle accelerator, and that could make power plants far cheaper. Moving on from energy into biomedicine. Of course, everybody's heard about the Wegovi drug that's targeting the GLP-1 receptor. It has a big fad going on in the news, certainly. It has taken off. It helps people struggling with diabetes and weight loss. It was Science Magazine's breakthrough of the year, and deservedly so. I'm excited to see this in the longer term. Do people on Wegovi actually live longer? What about their biological aging rate? Now, caloric restriction tends to slow aging. Is that going to happen to people on this drug? I can't wait to find out. Two antibody drugs have been granted approval for fighting Alzheimer's disease. According to science, lecanemab slowed loss of cognition by 27%, and another antibody treatment that tra targets the same protein, amyloid beta, called donatumab, slowed cognitive decline by as much as 35%. And they're expecting U.S. approval could come any day. Now, that's not a cure, but it's something. I've been watching amyloid debate for a long time. There's this big question. Does amyloid protein cause Alzheimer's disease, or is it more of a symptom? I thought the evidence was leaning away from amyloid beta, but this suggests that amyloid hypothesis still has legs. Gene editing cured sickle cells disease. After a trial in the UK, a cohort of trial participants had many of the effects of sickle cell disease greatly reduced, or even eliminated. 
Sickle cell disease is caused by inheriting a bad gene, and it's horrible and painful and deadly. Scientists took some of the patient's cells, edited their DNA, and put those cells back into their bodies. The edits fixed it. That's a big deal. I was also excited about a paper that covered the possibility of using taurine for extending longevity in general. It's early days, but any molecule that might buy health span is welcome. Now, I've been spending a fair amount of my time reading the longevity intervention literature, and I'm planning on more longevity content here on this channel. So if you like that, please stay tuned. Space news! India landed a robot on the moon in 2023. Very cool. NASA's OSIRIS-REx probe came back with asteroid material. Also very cool. Everybody talks about space news, so go watch Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's charming. Moving on. LK-99, the superconductor that wasn't. Even though it turned out to be a dud, it was a really amazing story to see science work in real time. I wish it had been a real room temperature superconductor. It would have meant MRI machines become much smaller and cheaper because most of the machine is just a huge superconducting magnet that has to be cooled to liquid nitrogen or even liquid helium temperatures. If we had room temperature superconductors, it would be a lot better. Likewise with fusion energy, lots of technical barriers to massive fusion reactors are the size and expense of huge cryogenic superconducting magnets. If the magnets were just coils of room temperature wire, that would make everything simpler and cheaper. Also consider the electric grid. It's not economical to build solar farms in the Mojave and Sahara and Australian outback and pipe that electricity over intercontinental distances, but those transit losses are eliminable if we had a room temperature superconductor. It could send energy from solar farms on the other side of the world with no problem. The sun would never set on the world's shared solar panel array, and that would be amazing. So it's too bad it didn't work. But that's how science works. It is a series of failure until it isn't. AI took off in 2023. Between the chat bots and generative images, I am now convinced that the AI skeptics are going to be proven wrong. Self-driving cars are not here, but look at the difference in AI capabilities year over year. This is going to happen. Human-level robots are on the way. Consider this. From 2022 to the end of 2023, we went from something that was barely a toy to something that's practical for making pretty good illustrations. Now, that brings challenges. Artists have sued those image generators because they use training data without licenses or permission. The New York Times just filed a similar lawsuit against OpenAI on the grounds that ChatGPT did something similar with their data. Where is that going to go? Can they put the genie back in the bottle? I doubt it. For better or worse, we have entered the age of artificial intelligence. It's solving problems in protein folding and nuclear fusion. It will solve problems in self-driving taxis and stocking shelves and cleaning bathrooms soon enough. Are we ready for that? 2023 was the hottest year on record. Again. But winter still exists, so checkmate climatologists? No. This is a real thing. We should all be aware of it. It's a problem. And finally, Deepak Quireless publication. Uh, this is a personal story, but hey, it's my list. I can do what I want. I'm excited about it because my former student got this thing done despite reviewers that did not make it easy. I think it produced a great paper. Deepak made DNA-coded carbon particles. That by itself is pretty cool. Then he used those particles in PCR to detect salmonella DNA. The idea is if salmonella is present, then the short single-stranded DNA molecules will bind to the salmonella DNA and grow into long chunks of double-stranded DNA that can be detected. Normally, you have to do this in multiple tubes with some purification involved because the chicken sample is just too dirty to run the reaction. But those particles are resistant both to the chicken juices and to the high temperatures involved in the polymerase chain reaction. So that's pretty unique. One reviewer is a little skeptical, so Deepak swabbed chicken drippings directly into his PCR reaction, no cleanup, and that sample still tested positive or negative appropriately. So that's pretty cool. So congratulations to Deepak. I'm really impressed with his work in that, as well as within the battery, which I will share as soon as I can. Final conclusion, the algorithm doesn't always show subscribers my videos, and I have set up a mailing list so I can send monthly or fewer email updates with links to my work. I would love it if you'd join. You can head to peterlab slash list or hit the link below to sign up. I promise I will not fill your inbox. In any case, thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.